Well, good morning, everyone. What a day to come and, and uh, praise our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, you all, all are getting it now, I know. That's why we come. And you'll probably hear me say this every Sunday from now on until your clients say, oh, please don't say that no more. No, you would never do that. No, nope, I am happy. Look at the weather. It's beautiful. Yep, and we are blessed. And we're blessed to have all of us here on Zoom today as well. So goodness, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Uh, we got a few announcements today. Uh, starting off with Bible class, which is normally on Wednesdays when I'm on time. No, it's kind of... Um, Normally on Wednesdays, but not this week. Uh, Vilma and I are going to the Majestic. So we'll be there. But we are having Bible class at 7 o'clock on Thursday. On Thursday. So if you'd like to attend, please do. Theology class is still on Tuesday at 6.30. And if you, for you adventurous types, if you want to join into both, you have that option as well. Uh, Crafty Ladies is on 14 March at 10 o'clock. That is still the same. However, it is not at Lila's house now. It will be here in the church. So uh, please join uh, the Crafty Ladies. Uh, for some of you, that's even going to be a little closer. For some of you, it's going to be a little further. But it will be back here in the church, and that is on Tuesday, 14 March. Don't forget, next Sunday is potluck. Mm. So for all of us that are going to attend that, please bring your favorite dish. I'm sure if it's your favorite, it'll be our favorite. Because there's, I, I'm a firm believer, having been raised in this church from way back when two things latter-day saints love to do and that's eat and chat so um we have a work day coming up on 18 march uh some of us like ralph and i will be here at 9 a, 9 a.m but for the rest of you because we're thinking about you we know that extra hour sleep is important uh 10 o'clock as well, so eight to 10, somewhere in there. We can use all the help we can get. We're working on the exterior, cleaning it up. We're gonna cut some limbs off. We're gonna blow the leaves off the roof. We're gonna get the leaves off the ground. <laughs> so there's plenty to do. If you're able and uh, you would like to come out and join us, please do. Um, don't forget the camps are coming up. World Conference is coming up, April 22nd, 28th, Senior High Camp, June 11th through 17th. And then it kind of continues on into the Texas Reunion. And this is at Cianito from 17 to 24. And then Junior and Junior High Camp at Cianito, 25 June through the 1st of July. So, that pretty much covers all of our announcements. And you're all up to speed. What did I know? So I love being here with you. Oh, there is one thing I, I would like to remind everybody. And remember, distance is not an issue. But if you'd ever like a visit, I may call you anyway, but if you ever want to visit, let me know. Also, should you ever want or feel the need to have administration, let me know. And we'll come, I'll come to your home and I'll bring somebody with me. You know, we're always available for or to meet your needs. And don't worry about distance. I know how people tend to be. I live too far. Uh, I was raised in a time where if you didn't travel a long time just to go to church a long distance, you probably weren't a Latter-day Saint. So 
I grew up that way. I am still that way. So if you have needs, make sure uh, you let me know. Um, now Jim will come up and uh, give us our uh, prayer concerns for the morning. And God bless you all. Will you join me in prayer? Gentle God, the creator of all, we humbly sit in your presence seeking blessings and spiritual wholeness. In your love, we feel safe, and yet we come here with concern for brothers and sisters that we love and worry about. We know that you are aware of each of these and that you're already intervening in their lives, but we uphold them to you and ask for blessings that you can pour onto them. And we ask for wisdom in ways that we can minister to their needs too, as well. We uphold Michelle M who struggles with healing from cancer and complications. Please comfort her and be with her, her family, and her medical team. Ralph's neighbors, Larry and Norma, are dealing with his Alzheimer's and some broken bones from his fall. Kelly P. has recently developed COVID and be with Kelly and her family and support group. And today, guide us, God, in our worship this day to focus on you and exploring the creation that you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you to uh, this morning's service here in the Shenandoah congregation. Uh, my welcome is extended not only to those in the sanctuary, but also to those who are joining us from your homes or wherever you may be this morning online. Um, I, uh, I thank you for making some time this morning as we gather as a congregation, as we gather as a community uh, to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning is the uh, first Sunday of March, if you can believe that. We are into March now. Um, and so as a result, we have here at the front of the sanctuary is our communion table, which we will be partaking in uh, during, a, during, the, uh, during the service. And so for uh, everyone who is joining online, if, uh, if the idea that it's March catches you off guard as it did me, uh, when at work, and I realized I had deadlines coming up. Uh, if if March catches you off guard and you have not uh, prepared your communion emblems for the service later on, um, we will have a couple of hymns uh, between now and then, which would be an opportunity for you to go and get some bread and some uh, juice or some water for your preparation, uh, wherever you may be. This morning, uh, we have a number of people involved in the service, and by involved, uh, each person in their own way is bringing their own ministry to this morning's service. And uh, we talk about uh, our, our sharing of our talents, sharing of our time, sharing of our treasures. Um, this morning, participating in the service, uh, Patty will be bringing us our morning message. We also have Jeremy and Kathleen and Cassandra and Jenna, who will be partaking in today's service and offering their ministry as the service unfolds. And then we have also uh, John and Miranda who are working the dials and uh, keeping everything functioning, uh, spinning the ones and twos over there. So um, thank you to everybody and as well as then uh, Jim and Carol will be serving our uh, emblems this morning, uh, our, our communion. So uh, thank you to everybody uh, who is bringing their talents to this morning's service. 
I'd like to start with an activity this morning. We're going to try something a little bit different. And um, not quite yet. In a little while, Jeremy and Jenna are going to be passing out uh, something to you. Uh, but um, this morning's theme is Explore Your Faith. And we are going to explore our faith this morning through the enduring principles. Have you heard of the enduring principles? Are you aware of what those enduring principles are? Uh, if you have not or are not, we're going to go through that a little bit. The enduring principles are uh, our definition. Uh, the, our enduring principles define the essence, the heart, and the soul of our faith community, community of Christ. Uh, they describe the personality of our church as expressed throughout the world. God's revelation in Jesus Christ and continuing presence through the Holy Spirit is the foundation of our faith, identity, missions, message, and beliefs. We do our best. We aspire to uphold these principles, these concepts as a faithful response. So I love that statement. We aspire to hold, uphold these principles as a faithful response. It ends with an action associated with it. So our enduring principles define the essence of who we are and who we aspire to be in our world and to share that with our world. Now, there are nine enduring principles. And I'm going to show those up on the screen, and we're going to, I'm going to talk to them just briefly. We have grace and generosity. God's grace is generous and unconditional. Having received God's generous grace, we respond generously and graciously, and we receive uh, the generosity of others. The next one is sacredness of creation. In the beginning, God created and called it all good. We join with God as stewards of care and hope for all creation. Our third enduring principle, continuing revelation. God graciously reveals divine will today as in the past. Worth of all persons, God views all people as having an estimable and equal worth. We seek to uphold and restore the worth of all people individually and in community, challenging unjust systems that diminish human worth. These are the things that we aspire to be in our world. The next one, all are called. God graciously gives people gifts and opportunities to do good and to share in God's purposes. We respond faithfully with the help of the Holy Spirit to our best understanding of God's call for us. Next, we have responsible choices. God gives humans the ability to make choices. With that comes responsibility. We are called to make responsible choices within the circumstances of our lives that contribute to the purposes of God. We have then pursuit of peace or shalom. God wants shalom, justice, reconciliation, well-being, wholeness, and peace for all of creation. We celebrate God's peace wherever it appears or is being pursued by people of goodwill. Unity in diversity. Community of Christ is a diverse international family of disciples, seekers, and congregations. The church embraces diversity and unity through the power of the Holy Spirit. And finally, blessings of community. The gospel of Jesus Christ is expressed best in community. In community life where people become vulnerable to God's grace and to each other. We are called to create communities of Christ's peace in our families and congregations and across villages, tribes, nations, and throughout creation. These are our enduring principles that we hold up as a denomination in our world. And as we said before, though, 
these enduring principles are concepts. The importance of concepts is they provide us a vision of where we want to go, but they have to be translated. They have to be translated into actions. They have to be translated into our own behaviors. They have to become a part of us and then exude from us as behaviors that we share with those who are around us. Now, <clears throat> my parents were teachers, and I remember when I was young, they were studying behavior modification in their classrooms and how they could best bring out the behaviors that they wanted uh, from their students. And now there's a couple different ways that you can, uh, you can embrace behavior modification. Uh, as I've always said, uh, you, you get rewards for things that you do. Now, when you don't do good things, you may not like the rewards that you receive. <laughs> and when you do good things, you hopefully will uh, enjoy the rewards that you receive. In behavior modification, that can be expressed through things like discipline, but it also can be expressed through things like fun. And I would like to have us engage in an activity of fun behavior as it relates to these enduring principles. And so what we're going to do is Jeremy and Jenna here in the sanctuary are going to pass something out to you real quick, and it's going to look like this. <clears throat> And it's called behavior bingo. We are going to we are going to engage in behavioral bingo this morning, as it relates to these enduring principles. If the enduring principles are concepts, but don't ever become real actions, tangible things that you can incorporate in your daily lives, and they're just concepts. They're a great vision. They're a great aspiration, but they're not real. We're going to make them real in this morning's activity. I had this idea literally. The week that COVID hit, I built this whole thing out and I was getting ready to come back and share it with the congregation. And then we didn't share together <laughs> in space anymore. And so this is rolling it out now. So everybody have a copy of your behavioral bingo card. Now everybody knows how bingo works, right? You try to connect five dots and you can do that vertically. You can do that horizontally, or you can do that diagonally. And what we're going to do is we're going to break into groups of four or five here in the sanctuary. And I want you to take a look and we all have the same card, by the way, we're all playing on the same bingo card this morning. Okay. You're going to take a look at within your group of four to five people, and you're going to see if you can make a bingo as a group. And if you have a, a behavior that you have exhibited, that you have given um, in the last two weeks, okay? So you're looking at the last two weeks of your life. Any of these, have you done any of these? And this isn't passing judgment. If you feel like you have done that, you get to put an X in that square. You don't have to justify that you have accomplished it. If you, if in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, you feel like I accomplished that in the last two weeks, I did that. I took this action that represented an enduring principle I gave in my behavior then you get to put an X in it and your team then gets another X in it. Now here's, I love this part of the bingo card. Do you know every bingo card comes with that center space that's called free space? Well, in behavioral bingo, that's called grace space. God just gives that one to you. You get that grace space in your bingo card. So what I want is, everybody understand what we're doing here? Okay. Um, in the sanctuary here, I want you to get up, disperse, form groups of four to five people and then start comparing whether or not you can put an X in any of those squares, contribute that to your team and see if your team can make a bingo. And we're going to have a few minutes to do that. For everybody who is online on Zoom, what I'd like you to do is you are a group and I'd like you to unmute your line. You can see the bingo card that is being shared and I'd like you to chat amongst yourselves and to see if you can create a bingo. All right, we've got five minutes. Let's see if we can create behavioral bingo with our enduring principles, okay? Up and disperse. <laughs> All right, Zoom people.
Can anybody put an X in any of the squares? I'm going to go with respectfully disagreed. Okay. And found common ground at the women's retreat. Okay. Oh, good one. I'm going to go with didn't idle engine in line. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um. Let's see. Found common ground. Express Somebody marking this? Yeah. I, uh, let's see. Hold on a second. Let me find a piece of paper I could use. Recycle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Recycled, somebody said. That too. I respectfully disagreed. Disagreed. I yeah. challenged injustice. I okay. volunteered my time. Okay. I would say Alfred Ministry, since I was able to administer to a couple of people during the women's retreat. I did not cheat. Relay friend of a burden. I couldn't hear that one. Relief friend of burden. I think I expressed compassion to somebody. We could say any of us could say assist to the poor if we in, included an oblation in our offering. Right. And the um, um, feeding the people. <sighs> Called out racism? I do that on Facebook all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I think I saw something you you put out on uh, Facebook yesterday about that. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's still one that I don't think I heard. I, I asked. I volunteered my time to help my friend who was struggling with some students and I gave okay. him some. Good. All right. All right, so there's 20 squares. No, five by five, 25 squares there. I gave voice to the voiceless, kind of. Um, let me explain it and see if you think it fits. These are children uh, that I teach a class to that okay. don't normally have, any, children generally don't normally have an opportunity to speak up and say what they think and do what they want to do, et cetera. And I give them uh -huh. that choice during this class. Now that's stretching it a little bit, but um, it's not like somebody that really- About one minute left, somebody, one minute left. We'll take it, Carol. Okay. Does that mean we got that whole row? Let's see, we got somebody else keep score while I call them out. Okay, um, recycled. I didn't, uh, recycled, uh, disagreed, justice or injustice, volunteered your time. Offered ministry, did not cheat. You had compassion, expressed compassion. The poor, what was it about the poor? Assisted the poor. Okay. Uh, uh, racism. You didn't idle your engine and line. All right, I'm going to ask us to start resetting back. Uh. If we can begin to do that. Everybody can start making their way back. <laughs> Richard, this is Carol White. Can you hear me? I sure can. I would like to have a copy of that bingo book, uh, little card so I can put it on my refrigerator to remind That's, me to do those things. That, so uh, you know what, Carol? 
Uh, that's that's a, exactly where we're going with this. Okay, so, good. I mean, it's uh, worded in such a nice way that you can remember. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Right. To keep it in front of you. Right. So, uh, so I saw some different groups form here and online. Now, now we talk about behavior modification and rewarding for um, things accomplished. So what's the endorphin that you get from playing bingo? What's the moment that you look forward to? Getting to yell out bingo, right? So let me ask here and on, on in Sanctuary and online and online, if you'd like to, you can unmute. Did anybody have a bingo that they want to shout out bingo about? There we go. There we go. So um, who had vertical bingo? Who had a vertical bingo? I see a group back here that had a vertical bingo. Who had a horizontal bingo? All right. Anybody have diagonal bingo? Got some di diagonal bingos took care, took uh, advantage of the gray space, right? Um, so uh, when when I was preparing to do this, Cassandra asked me a question. Are we playing standard bingo or are we playing blackout? Now that's an overachiever uh, <laughs> going for the blackout, uh, but a good thing to aspire to. Now, um, Carol, to your question, a couple of things. I'm going to be making up a number of these things so that you can have them. But here's what you don't see is there's a backside to this bingo card. There's a, it's a two-sided bingo card. Now, you, you don't see it right now, right? But there's two-sided to bingo card. If you notice on the sides, it said giving. This was you expressing the enduring principles through your behavior, right? Well, there's another side, which is the gratitude, not the giving side, the gratitude of recognizing enduring principles that have been shared with you. And those are also important and powerful to recognize when those happen in your life and be filled with the gratitude of an enduring principle in your world. So um, there will be more uh, cards to come and um, and different ways that we will be sharing behavioral bingo. but. Uh, Carol, to your point, yes, uh, put it on your refrigerator, put it on your mirror, keep it in front of you. And at times, take a line that you say, ooh, that's a hard one. That's got a tough one in it. I'm not sure if I can do that. Push yourself, challenge yourself. Say, I'm gonna get that bingo and I'm going to put an X in that one square, yes. Uh, so the, co the comment was that within the group, no one person had a full line, but as a group, they were able to get that bingo and, and to share in that success of having a bingo. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's part of community, right? One of the enduring principles is the blessings of community, that when you are struggling and you don't feel like these enduring principles are alive in your life, form community and take the energy that comes from those being expressed by others around you. So I hope you enjoyed this morning's activity as we explore our faith this morning. We'll now continue in our service with our song of foundation, uh, which is hymn number 250, How Firm a Foundation. And we will be standing for the singing of this hymn followed by the invocation brought to us by Jeremy. <clears throat>
join me in prayer. Loving creator, we still our busy minds to explore, wonder, and marvel. The beauty of creation is blooming with your spirit today. Open our eyes and let us see your wonder. Let us pause and breathe in that recycled life-giving air that countless generations before breathed as well. Their work, their love, their lives are within us as we continue to carry the story of your love. We will continue to share that love with your strength and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you all today in person and virtually. Um, we're moving into our disciples' generous response portion of our service, um, and this directly uh, relates to one of the enduring principles that we were just talking about, to grace and generosity. Um, <clears throat> I will give you a logistical heads up that um, today we are changing the way that we are receiving your gifts. Um, Kind of funny that uh, Richard introduced an activity to us today that we were ready to bring out the week that um, our that COVID hit us, and um, we're so we're kind of returning back, and we're going to return back another way today. Um, instead of having uh, the plate at the back of the sanctuary for us to receive your gifts, um, we're going to have an actual person pass the plate and receive your gifts today. Um, and then I've, I've got one other logistical thing to remind you of that uh, World Church is no longer sending out envelopes to your homes. And so we have pew envelopes now. So if you have a check or you have a ca uh, you have cash today in here in the sanctuary and you want to make sure that um, it is known that that it was you that gave it, I just ask that you use one of those pew envelopes and you can write your name on the back, um, indicate on the front where you would like your gift to be allocated. Okay, so I have all of the housekeeping done. Um, I'd like to share a scripture with you. This is from Doctrine and Covenants 95, verse 1a, adapted. Fear not. Let your hearts be comforted. Rejoice evermore. And in everything, give thanks, waiting patiently on the Lord. The love that is life-changing comes first from God's overwhelming love and generosity expressed in the life and person of Jesus Christ, who gave all. In community of Christ, we express this as grace and generosity, one of our enduring principles. 
We believe God loves and gives graciously and generously. We recognize that all we are and all that we have is a gift from God. Therefore, discipleship is a whole life stewardship. We willingly respond to God's enormous generosity. Being generous disciples, returning, uh, turning that concept into an action is all about aligning our priorities and our hearts with God's priorities and heart. At this time, I would ask that you bow with me. I'm going to share um, a blessing now um, over the gifts that you will be giving in a moment. And please also know that if you didn't come prepared to give, give this morning, you can always still um, give online at our, uh, at our uh, website, communityofchristsa.org. You can give through e-tithing. And as always, not only your treasure, but your time and talent is equally uh, worthy uh, a, as a gift. So I would ask that you would bow with me at this time. Heavenly creator, we bask in your graciousness and your generosity. We generously receive the gifts that you have given. And we thank you for the opportunity to return a portion of those gifts that you have generously blessed each with. We ask that you travel with and bless the gifts that we offer today, that they, may find, that they might find their way to those who are most in need. We ask that your spirit be with each of us as we give, that your spirit be with each of us as we receive, and that we continue to recognize and rejoice in the blessings that you give. And we rejoice by returning a portion to you. We ask your blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now um, Earl is going to receive the gifts that we graciously give.
Today's scripture reading comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4a. And this scripture is the prelude to the scripture message Patty will be bringing this morning. The Lord had said to Abram, go, for, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Next, we'll sing our hymn of faith, uh, which is uh, hymn number 350. We are a family of faith. Uh, and after the singing of this hymn, we'll enter into our communion message. And then following that, we'll partake of communion this morning. So hymn number 315 will remain seated for the singing of this hymn. Good morning. It's indeed a good morning and one in which we thank God for his many blessings. Uh, Earl mentioned that it's a beautiful day there in San Antonio and the same here in Western Pennsylvania. The sun is out and it just makes us all feel good. So as you know, and as we've been um, going through our service here, today's theme is explore your faith. So let's start with a definition of faith. Now, the dictionary tells us that faith is confidence or trust in a person or a thing, such as another's ability. Faith is a belief that is not based on proof. What does faith mean according to the Bible? Well, the closest that the Bible comes to offering an exact definition is found in Hebrews 11.1, 1, and I'm sure you've heard this uh, scripture many times. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. From this particular passage, we see that the central feature of faith is confidence or trust. So now let's turn to the scripture reading for today, which comes to us from Romans chapter four, verses one through five and 13 through 17. And this is Paul who is talking. So what can we say about Abraham, the father of our people? What did he learn about faith? If Abraham was made right by the things he did, he had a reason to boast about himself. But God knew differently. That's why the scripture says, Abraham believed God, and because of this, he was accepted as one who was right with God. When people work, their pay is not given to them as a gift. They earn the pay that they get. 
but people cannot do any work that will make them right with God. So they mu must trust in him. Then he accepts their faith and that makes them right with him. He is the one who makes even evil people right. Abraham and his descendants received the promise that they would get the whole world. But Abraham did not receive that promise because he followed the law. He received that promise because he was right with God through his faith. If people could get God's promise by following the law, then faith is worthless. And God's promise to Abraham is worthless because the law can only bring God's anger on those who disobey it. But if there is no law, then there is nothing to disobey. So people get what God promised by having faith. This happens so that the promise can be a free gift. And if the promise is a free gift, then all of Abraham's people will get that promise. The promise is not just for those who live under the law of Moses. It is for all who live with faith as Abraham did. He is the father of us all. As the scriptures say, I have made you a father of many nations. This is true before God, the one Abraham believed, the God who gives life to the dead and speaks of things that don't yet exist as if they are real. So Abraham, by helpless, unseen faith, believed in God's promises. He only saw one promise become a reality, and that was the birth of his son, Isaac. As a result, his trust in God was credited to him as having God's righteousness and not his own. Now, when you were born, you were born into sin. You hadn't sinned at that point, but you were born as a sinner. However, when we put our faith into and upon the Lord Jesus Christ, we exercise that faith, believing God, putting our faith into what he has done for us and into the Lord Jesus Christ. In his book titled Six Hours, One Friday, Max Locato tells a story of how he and his boat survived a hurricane. An old seaman gave Max the advice to take his boat to deep water, drop four anchors off each corner of the boat, and pray that the anchors held. Max survived that storm, but he says that he learned an important lesson. All of us need an anchor that will hold during the storms of life. That anchor is our faith. What have you put your faith in? How important is it to have faith? And where do we find a faith strong enough to make it through the storms of life? In 1 Peter, Peter knows how important faith is, and he gives us a great picture of faith, a faith that we can anchor deep with and a faith which will hold us during the storms of life. Peter helps us gain some insight into how to live an authentic Christ-centered faith in the midst of some difficult times. The question is not if we have faith, because everyone has faith. The atheist has faith that his rational reasoning has removed the possibility of God. He has faith in his intellectual ability. Others have faith in their abilities, skills, connections, friends, family, and themselves. Everyone has faith. The question is, where is your faith anchored? Sooner or later, the storms of life will begin to blow, and then the question again becomes, will the anchor of faith hold? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the faith we have now will see us through until the last days. We should trust Christ because our faith is not ordinary. It is a tested faith. Countless people have placed their faith in Christ and found the anchor holes. As our faith begins to reflect a deeper knowledge of Jesus, our lives will begin to change. When you and I live differently because our faith is growing, those around us will see the difference in us. Quite literally, your life begins to reflect the image of Christ. Jesus desires his reflection in our lives. That can only happen in a refined faith that has been tested. Peter talks about how we love Christ, even though we have not seen him. In Hebrews, we have the definition of faith, which I read to you just a couple minutes ago. 
Now, faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Word it just a little bit differently. The essence of faith is that it does not require our sight or proof. But notice that faith is reality. Just because something is not seen does not negate its existence. If it did, all of us would be brainless, for I doubt that you have seen your own brain. But we know that we have a brain. Peter says that real faith is loving a Christ you have never seen, but still no exists. All of us have faith, but again, will your anchor of faith hold in the storms of life? Is your anchor of faith a true anchor? Is your faith built upon the truth of scripture? Is your faith tested? Do you know how valuable, revealing, and full of love a faith in Christ is? Is your faith timeless? Or will the newest fad or the latest philosophy cause you to tie to a new anchor? Only a faith in Christ is true, tested, and timeless. Again, it's not a question of if you have faith. It is not a question of if the storms of life will come. It is a question, will your anchor of faith hold through the storms? The time to anchor your hope and faith to Christ is now, before the storms show up. So the next question I want to ask you is, do you have enough faith? And, you know, it's okay to have questions and wonder why something has happened the way it has. God doesn't expect us to be super believers who never doubt, question, or wonder. That's not reality. The presence of faith does not mean the absence of doubt. Sometimes it's our doubt that draws us closer to God. It is our looking and our searching that we often draw closer to him. Perhaps some of your doubts were triggered by the feeling that you have been let down by God, not acting the way you thought God should act. Maybe you have believed that nothing bad will happen to you, or if you act like a good person, God will make sure that only good things happen to you. I bet you have come to realize that what you thought about God just wasn't true. Having doubts draws you deeper, and you begin to have a better picture of God and a faith that goes deeper than it previously was. Often when we are doubting and we are struggling, God sends someone to help us through. Instead of worrying about your doubts, look at the people in your life and how they may be positioned to encourage, support you, and help you bear your burden. So I have a, a funny story here that I read on Facebook about a month ago, and it is about others helping you to bear your burden. So a woman went to the pharmacy for some medication that her husband desperately needed. When she comes back to the car, she sees that she locked her keys in the car. Feeling desperate, she found a rusty hanger, but then she looked at it and she knew she didn't know how to use it to unlock the car. So she said a quick prayer and asked God to send her some help. Just a couple of minutes later, a man pulls up on his motorcycle. He has a scruffy beard, he's wearing a do-rag, and he kind of looks like a hippie from perhaps the 1960s. He asked if she needed help and she said, yes, I locked my keys in the car and I don't know how to use this anger. Can you help me? And his response was, well, sure. Within a few seconds, he had the car unlocked. The woman was so happy, she threw her arms around the man and she thanked God for sending a nice man to help her. And the man said, lady, I'm not a nice person. I just got out of prison yesterday and I was there for auto theft. She threw her arms around him again and said, thank you, God. You not only sent someone to help me, but you sent a professional. <laughs> this man had definitely helped her bear her burden. Just as all of you and God have helped me bear the burden of my husband's illness, I must admit that Jim and I have had a very good life together, and I hope there's still many more years to come. There have been ups and downs through this whole process, but nothing serious. So when we received Jim's diagnosis almost a year ago now, I did start to doubt and I wondered, why us? 
Then with my faith restored to do to God and all of you, other friends and our family in the Northeast, Jim and I have been able to move forward and take things one day at a time. At this point, we don't know where the final destination of this journey is going to take us, but we have been able to anchor our faith on our position in Christ due to our faith. I've also seen our new grandson, Jameson, demonstrate his trust and faith. Now, babies don't know what faith is, but as someone cares for them, they develop both their faith and their trust in their caretakers. Jameson was born with some breathing issues and Tom and Stephanie were not allowed to hold or, or bond with him at first. They did their best, they talked to him, they rubbed his arms and hands so that he knew that someone was there for them. Then the day came when Stephanie was held him for the first time. And we have a picture where Jameson is just looking up at his mother with this look on his face that seems to say, are you my mother? And you can see uh, Stephanie responding, yes, Jameson, I am. And from that point forward, Jameson had faith and trust in his parents. And now at four and a half months old, he's a very happy baby who loves to laugh at the silly antics of his parents and others. And I'm telling you, and I'm sure you know, nothing is sillier than adults acting in such a way to make a baby laugh. We all do it, right? So today we come to this table, this communion table. Communion is also an act of faith. Faith allows us to experience the presence of Christ. If we define faith as fundamentally a response to God as he reveals his mysterious presence, then our response is deepened every time we gather to celebrate and receive communion. It not only deepens the faith of individuals, but the faith of the church as well. In conclusion, I want to reiterate again that all of us have faith. The question is, will your anchor of faith hold in the storms of life? Is your anchor of faith a true anchor? Is your faith built upon the truth of scripture? Is your faith tested? Do you know how valuable, revealing, and full of love a faith in Christ is? Is your faith timeless? Or will the newest fad or the latest philosophy cause you to tie to a new anchor? Only a faith in Christ is true, tested, and timeless. Again, remember, it's not a question of if you have faith. It's not a question of if the storms of life will come, because they will. It is the question, will your anchor of faith hold through the storms? The time to anchor your hope and your faith to Christ is now, before those storms show up. And I wish you now all, I wish you all many blessings and God bless you all and those you love. Thank you so much, Patty. At this time now, uh, we will enter into uh, our communion portion of the service. And I'd like to share this with you all are welcome at Christ's table. The Lord's Supper or communion is a sacrament in which we remember the life, death, resurrection, and continuing presence of Jesus Christ. In community of Christ, we also experience communion as an opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant and to be formed as disciples who live Christ's mission. Others may have different or added understandings within their faith traditions. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. And now as we prepare the emblems for communion this morning, I would ask that you join in the singing of the hymn uh, 526, Is There One Who Feels Unworthy and Will Remain Seated for the Singing of this Hymn, 526. Is there one who feels unknown? Is there one? 
words from Luke chapter 22 verses 14 through 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. At this time, we will offer the blessing over the bread and the wine, and then all will be invited to come forward, starting from the back of the sanctuary forward, to partake of the communion. And, uh, and during that time, uh, those who are at home or elsewhere, uh, this will be your opportunity to take communion as well. So I would invite you now to kneel as much as possible facing the altar as Carol Burdick offers a combined blessing on the bread and wine. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son, and witness so to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him, and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
Jesus would die. Please join me in prayer. Listen to the salutation of the dawn. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Such is the salutation of the dawn. Amen. We'll close this morning's service with the singing of hymn number 313, One Common Prayer. Now, this is a single verse uh, hymn, but we will sing it through three times, followed by the benediction. Hymn number 313, and I'd ask that you stand for the singing of this hymn. Lord, as we have gathered in your name this morning, we rejoice for the opportunity to share together, and we are so grateful for the message which we received today through the ministry which was offered. Lord, as each of us have our own agency, and we are thankful for that which you have given to us. We recognize our role to that agency and therefore the decisions and actions and behaviors which we need to hone and to uh, align with your wishes. We ask, Lord, that you would guide us as we continue every day of our lives to explore our faith, to identify those areas which we need to shore up and anchor to, and that our actions, our behaviors might always reflect your wishes here on earth for us and for all of your creation. These things, Lord, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. At this time now, I would uh, invite everyone online to uh, unmute your lines and join in fellowship and uh, as we fellowship here in the sanctuary if you would like to share with those online there will be a microphone right over here in the corner and they can see you and they can hear you then uh, from there so thank you very much for joining in our service this morning Hello, everyone. Greetings, Patty. I always like that story. <laughs> I don't know if that was you that posted it, Kim, or, or I quit, couldn't remember, but I liked I it when I saw it. <laughs> I don't know, but I think I used it a number of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cute story. <laughs> Hello, Kim. How are you doing? Good. You didn't catch the COVID, did you? Apparently not. I tested uh, negative twice. Oh yep. I I missed it too. Thank goodness. Oh, so Kelly, wish you had been in with us. You might not have. Yep. There's no telling. 
Yeah, you see lots more people than I do. Patty, I'm just, I loved your sermon, how down to earth it was and realistic. And um, I just told Roger, it was such a healthy approach. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everybody else doing well? Reasonably. All right. Good deal. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to sign off. So you all take care. Thank you. Good to see you, Bruce. Thank you. Good to be, good to watch. Good to see you. <laughs> good to be seen. <laughs> so get well, Kelly. Thanks, Kim. I'm just hanging out here at home. Oh, there you go. You must have needed a rest. Yeah. So tell John to pick up some Chinese for you or something. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I will. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay. <clears throat>